Hello and welcome to another edition of the Inside Track Football Insiders Show, bringing you all the exclusive news and updates from your club. Today, we're going to be talking about all things Liverpool because with the transfer window just days away from opening in England and the Premier League, Liverpool have wasted no time in getting some business done early. Joining me to discuss all the latest coming out of Anfield is Football Insider's Merseyside correspondent David Lynch. David, I touched on it there. Liverpool wasting no time in getting their first signing through the door in Alexis McAllister from Brighton. Uh, obviously, quite a, a high-profile signing for Liverpool. He's done wonders uh, at Brighton and obviously was one of the star men for Argentina at the World Cup. Um, obviously, we've been covering this story for quite a while now. You've been all over this. Um but wanna, now that the deal's done, I want to have a look into, into sort of the, the terms of the deal because, you know, the, the price tag that, that's being mentioned and, and that's out there um, and that you yourself have covered on, on Football Insider um, suggested it may have been a lower figure that, that, than many expected. What, what, what can you tell us about it? Yeah, so the, the, the figure that we're told is it was a, a officially an undisclosed fee, which I think uh, tells you that it was a, a figure that maybe Brighton had perhaps said, can we not publish this? It's it's not, it doesn't look as great on them as, as a lot of the other transfer fees they get. And yeah, £35 million, pounds, which, you know, in, in this day and age, in this market at the moment, um, it's just a remarkable steal, really. It just shows that that Liverpool had done the homework and, and, and that they knew that this clause existed and that, that a player of that quality could be got for such a low fee. Um, and, and, and it shows that there would have been a lot of competition around him as well. Uh, they've had to move really quickly to get this done, I think, because they knew, you know, they sensed that there would be competition, particularly at that price. You know, it's just an absolute sniff, isn't it? And, um, and they've managed to get the deal over the line for an absolute bargain, which is, you know, from Liverpool's perspective, I think, you know, really encouraging because I think you look back to last summer and there was all that upheaval. Michael Edwards had left mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, you, you look back on that summer's business as well. And perhaps those signings haven't quite, you know, taken fire yet really they haven't really got you know gone as well as you would have hoped and Liverpool's recruitment had otherwise been flawless but this on the surface of it you know looks like a, a Premier League proven player with real quality a World Cup winner for 35 million pounds it really looks like Liverpool are, are back to the best in the transfer market and they'll need to be because this is an important window for them absolutely absolutely you mentioned that it's a 35 million um, release clause obviously you've got uh, add-ons and, uh, and bonuses but but even then, what what we're we looking at 50, 50 million pounds. You know, when you when you consider what, like you say, the the, the deals that are going on in in the window. I, I think of you know Newcastle last summer signing Alexander Isak for for sixty million pounds. You know, this is a a proven player in the Premier League, World Cup winner. Well, as you say, it's a pretty sensational bit of business. You, it's got to be said. I'm sure Liverpool fans are are, are over the moon. I'm sure Brighton fans aren't too happy. But but you know, uh, this this is the world of of the Premier League and football. But you mentioned there that, that Liverpool had a lot of competition for this. Liverpool obviously laying the groundwork for this deal before the World Cup um, uh, and sort of working on this for months. In terms of the competition, I mean, where, where, were, where, were, where were the other teams that coming from that, that were potentially looking at, um, at McAllister? Well, the, the the strongest one late on was was a, a Chelsea push to sign him. I think I think that was the the known one that was yeah, like I say, the the, the strongest sort of competition Liverpool had. Mm. Um, but by that point, McAllister had sort of decided I want you know I wanted my uh, he, he knew going into this summer he wanted his his future sorted early, and I think Liverpool because they pushed so hard, he could clearly see what the project was going to look like. You know, you've got Jurgen Klopp there, who's such a draw for Liverpool, even though you've not got Champions League football. Um, you know, Liverpool had got it wrapped up by the time that, that Chelsea even got involved. But, you know, I'm thinking across the Premier League as well, though, in terms of, you know, if, if Manchester City had moved a little quicker, would he have been an ideal Gundogan replacement? You know, that he, you know, they, I think he would have been a really good yes. fit for them. And I think, you know, they'll look at that price and think that that would have been a great deal for us to do. But like I say, Liverpool moved fast, sold it to the player and, and, and triggered that release clause and got it wrapped up. And, and that's, you know, a sign of a club that's working well in the transfer market. Absolutely. Um, I'm, I'm sure from the outside looking in, um, I'm sure many fans looking at this thinking, you know, a bit of a coup for, for, for Liverpool. What What's the feeling at Anfield, though? You know, what, what's the feeling from inside the camp and uh, that they've managed to pull this one off? Yeah, it's very much that. that that's exactly it. It is a coup. It's, a, you know, like I say, a, a Premier League proven player of, of such quality. You know, one of the other elements of this buy that makes it really good from my perspective as well is he's a player who doesn't miss a lot of games through injury. 
you know, mm. that's another really appealing thing for Liverpool because you know the injury problems you've had in recent seasons, and particularly in that oh. midfield area. That's yeah, you know, Naby Keita just gone out the door recently. Is you know, he just didn't it didn't happen for him at Anfield, and the reason for that was because of his injury record. So to get McAllister in, somebody who's they hope will be available every week and be a big part of, of this rebuild that they're, they're putting together. Yeah, they're, they're very pleased, that, and, and, and yeah, it makes it even sweeter to get it done for a fee like that. Absolutely. Well, Liverpool fans, let us know in the comments what your thoughts on McAllister. And if you're a rival fan watching this, let us know what you think as well. Um, would you have liked to see your club sign McAllister? I'm sure there are plenty of us out there who, who would have. Um, you mentioned there, David, uh, sort of Liverpool undergoing a bit of an overhaul in midfield. You've obviously had Naby Keita. He's off to Werder Bremen. You've got James Milner, Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain on the way out. You've got Arthur Mello. Um, Liverpool fans probably forgot that he was even there, his loans over. Um, so obviously Liverpool looking at new additions. And, and again, this is a story that, that you've covered on Football Insider, um, making initial or opening initial talks for two potential additions. First off, Manu Kone, the 22-year-old at Borussia Mönchengladbach, uh, a versatile midfielder, obviously can play in, in multiple positions there in the midfield. And Kefren Thoram, uh, again, 22 over at OGC Nice. A um, bit more defensive mind. Uh, defensive midfielder there. Um, as I say, understand that Liverpool have made contact, um, open preliminary talks over these two. David, what's the latest on, on Liverpool's interest, Liverpool talks for, for either of these, these potential midfield additions? Yes, I must say it's, it's it's quite preliminary at the moment, and um, you know they, they like both players definitely, mm. and, and and you know it, it's it, we, we don't but we don't know quite what this midfield rebuild, the next stage of this is going to look like yet. I think that they, they're putting the, the word out there in terms of finding out exactly what these players would expect to be paid. You know, can they, they sell the role to them of, that they would play at Liverpool? But they know there's going to be interest from elsewhere, and 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 the, the phrase that keeps being um, you know parroted back to me by people at see, you know senior figures at Liverpool is that price and availability are, are, are key here now in terms of what follows. Is it going to be one more midfielder? Is it going to be two more? Can they do that for for an amount that still leaves them money left over to do you know address other areas of the squad? Um, it's all about that. So there's there's tentative contact, and I think you know Manu Kone and, and Kevin Saram, two two players who've shown real promise, will be you know they look like good additions alongside a McAllister, who's a little bit more established than they are in, in the yes. Premier League certainly. Anyway, um, you know, would be a really nice mix in that midfield. But we'll have to see how that sort of plays out from here. It's no guarantee that those two will be the ones that are chased because I know there is interest in other players as well in in that area of the pitch. So, but they, they really are casting the net wide now, Liverpool, because they know they don't want to leave themselves short because like I said, they, they made some mistakes last summer and they don't want to repeat of that. So they, 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 they're doing the groundwork now and then they'll get to a point when they know exactly what, what, you know, what this move's going to cost, that move's going to cost, how much the salary will be. And then they could start pulling the trigger toward, yeah. you know, as, as they move forward and, and hopefully from their perspective, they think get the business wrapped up nice and early. Absolutely. You talk about sort of price. Um, I mean, do we know what sort of fee Liverpool were, could expect to pay for for, for Toram or Kone, or do we know what sort of Liverpool, uh, what sort of price Liverpool are wanting to pay for for, like, say, a uh, perhaps a, a less established younger midfielder who who can come in alongside McAllister? The, the talk around Kone is around thirty-five million at the moment. Well, I mean, the, the, the proof will be in the pudding, I suppose, when the negotiations begin with Gladbach. It's that you know, we, we, that, but that is the talk around his feet. Taram slightly higher. I'm not sure if that's because of his contract mm. situation. Um, so, so maybe that'd be a bit more of a difficult deal to do. There is talk of PSG interest around him as well, which would you know that would that would make it tricky. We've seen when they when PSG were in for Ugarte up against Chelsea that they can blow you out of the water. Um, and, and Liverpool don't want to end up left in a situation like that. So, uh, but, but those are the fees that get knocked about. And like I say, I, I don't think Liverpool quite know exactly what that's going to look like yet. So that's why they're you know they're asking about so many players and, and, and like I say, casting the net wide. It's really helpful when you have a release clause situation like McAllister, and you can you can plan for that. But it's not always the case. So they know in these situations they have to ask a few players. They have to they have to see what the what the situation and the lay of the land is, and, and go from there really. Absolutely. Well, another one that Liverpool have been linked with, um, Romeo Lavia over at Southampton. Again, a young midfielder. Um, a lot of competition for, for Lavia's signing, though, though, David. Obviously, the likes of Chelsea really pushing hard for his capture. 
is, is he uh, again on that list of, of of targets? Where do where do Liverpool stand in terms of him? Because you can imagine that with that level of competition, that that the price is perhaps going to be inflated, and 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 is that possible? going to see Liverpool move on to other targets uh, ahead of him? Yeah, so we, we know that, that there's been contact with his with his representatives. There's There's been sensitive contact there. So Liverpool definitely like him. I mean, why would they not? I thought he was outstanding at Southampton side last season. The real, the real sort of standout player there and a side that was really struggling. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but in terms of next steps now, the, the one thing that makes me sceptical that maybe Lavia is the one that they will go for is, like you say, it's that competition, I think. You know, we know Chelsea are really in there. But Manchester City are already up. You know, they, they really want the player back. I think you know, maybe uh, a little bit of regret over letting him go. Um, and, and, and that's the level of interest he's getting at the moment. So there's a real potential there for a bidding war to emerge, and that is exactly the sort of situation Liverpool don't want to be dragged into. Uh, they, they, like I said, they want to get the business done early. So with Lavia, definitely like the player, but I think there'd have to be guarantees from his side that yes, I only want to go to Liverpool and. And Liverpool know that they're not going to get dragged into a bit more, as I say, because that that's a situation that they would like to avoid. Yeah. Um, what one thing that really stands out, and I'm sure to, to me and to, to fans watching this, um, Lavia only 19, Coney and Turan both 22 years old. It does really seem that, that Liverpool are preparing for the future with with these potential signings, with what could be a, you know a new look side almost, um, especially in that that midfield area is that in terms of this this summer is that the sort of profile of players that that Liverpool fans can expect more of is is that going to be the the, the main sort of target area for, for Liverpool bringing in these, these younger players um obviously the McAllister is probably the 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 exception there in terms of being a, a ready ready-made Premier League player yeah, I think I, I think they've needed that profile. They've needed to freshen things up in terms of the age profile of the squad for a while. You know, you, you think James Milner has just left, but he's played a, a significant role in recent years. You look at the age of Jordan Henderson, Thiago, Matip. These players are, are sort of edging mm. towards the end of the careers, and these these are players who are a big part of the successes Liverpool have had. So they really have needed to to sort of freshen things up in that area and and get some new young fresh blood in. And we we have seen it over recent windows. You know, you, you look at Gakpo. Darwin Nunez, these are younger players. Canate is another one. That that that's been the sort of constant aim is to is to bring in some sort of fresher and, and younger players now and, and and sort of build the own club sort of second great Liverpool side now. So that that is the aim, and I think that yeah, that's very much the the profile that they're targeting at the moment because you know you, you, they, they they went a little bit too far with that group of experienced players. I think even Jurgen Klopp would admit that, and that was a big part of why last season was so poor. I think a, a few players sort of simultaneously appeared to go over the hill at the same time, and and that, and that caused a sort yeah. of a collective drop off. So the idea now is to to really refresh and, and and Liverpool. You can see it from the profile, as you say, the players that they're targeting that they they do really want those younger players in now. Yeah. On the other hand, obviously, like you say, lot, a lot of experience in, in the likes of Milner and, and Oxley Chamberlain. Um, they've, you mentioned that they've got a lot of experienced heads still there, but but is there still scope for ready-made signings for experienced heads to come in if the right deal is is made available to Liverpool this summer? I think that the, the, the ready-made element, Liverpool would probably say, well, McAllister's that. He's in that exact age where he's just about to hit his peak. But I think anything past that, Liverpool would maybe be reluctant. I mean, you saw a rare example of them doing a deal like that was, was Thiago Alcantara. I was sort of surprised at the time that they did that, although he, he's ended up being a wonderful player for Liverpool. But that, there's been a downside to that as well, which is that his injury record has is, is been poor while he's been at Anfield. Um, and availability has been a real sort of uh, has let him down as a sign in a little bit really and um, and now obviously Liverpool is he's getting towards yeah. the end of his contract I think he's a year out now and you know you, you look at did Liverpool get enough value out of him perhaps not that that's a debate that Liverpool will have but those are very rare that they make those types of signings Liverpool are generally trying to make them on the cusp of them hitting the peak and and that's very much something they're going back to now yeah well, one of those uh, younger signings from, from last summer, um, you touched on it, Fabio Carvalho. Um, obviously, a lot of talk about uh, his future at Anfield, whether he has a future at Anfield, um, and obviously the, the talk of bids coming in for him. Do Liverpool want to let him go? Do they want to let him go on loan? Do they want to do a permanent deal? Um, you touched on this uh, on our last Liverpool video with, with Fraser, but I just wondered if you had any updates on, on where Fabio Carvalho's future lies at Anfield at the moment. 
Yeah, so Liverpool's stance hasn't changed in terms of they're saying that they, they, they very much don't want to sell the player this window, but I think that's ultimately going to look like it's a bargaining position because I know my, my latest understanding is that, that the talks are still ongoing with Leipzig and there's obviously a feeling that some sort of solution can be reached there, You know whether that's going to be a, a buyback option in yeah. a permanent deal or something like that. I think that seems like the, the sensible route out of this because I think for the player, you can, you can completely understand why he maybe doesn't want a loan move now to a club where... He's not going to be guaranteed he'll get minutes or, you know, his development is not going to be the number one priority at a loan club or if, you know, things take a turn for the worst as a team and it ends up being a relegation battle, why would you throw a youngster in? I, I, you know, and I can completely get that. And the opportunity to go to Germany where so many young English players have flourished recently and, 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 and play in the Champions League as well, it, it just seems like a great opportunity for him. So I think, you know, the, the fact that talks are, are still ongoing now and, and, and will continue over the weekend, I think, gives you an indication that there, there is a willingness there to, to try and find a solution. And I think, you know, maybe, maybe they will find one with that, like I say, the buyback, and, and that will give Liverpool the option to, to see how Carvalho's development plays out elsewhere and, and maybe they could still cash in on him further down the line. Absolutely. Um, it's been a, a bit of a heavy midfield talk today, David, but, but obviously that's not the only area that Liverpool will be looking to strengthen. Um, understand that the defensive additions could be on the cards. Obviously, um, you've got the likes of Joe Gomez, who's sort of on the fringes there at, at Liverpool behind the likes of Canate and Van Dijk. Um, Liverpool seem well stocked in, you know, two players in each position, but but is is that somewhere that, that Jurgen Klopp is looking to strengthen if if the right player becomes available? Yeah, very much so. I think I think there is, you know, the, the, when we talk about price and availability in midfield, the reason that's so important is because one of the other areas that Liverpool want to strengthen is is in defence at the moment. I think, you know, you can see where there's a, a, a you know, they, they could maybe need someone in there. They're, they're playing this new system now where Trent Alexander-Arnold is now pushing up into midfield mm -hmm. and it creates different demands on the defenders, ones that we haven't really seen in a, in a Jurgen Klopp system at Liverpool so far. So, for example, you know, Andy Robertson now is, is playing almost as a, a left centre half for a lot of the game. And that's yes. not really something that suits him. You know, does it does it suit Costa Simicus as well? He's two years out from the end of his contract. You know, could he be maybe attracting interest? So it, it maybe gives you a decision to make in terms of the profile of the player. So I think I think what they would ideally sign now is someone who can play as a fullback and a centre half. I think that that's something they would look at. And I think that vacancy is there's a real chance that comes up in the squad because, as I say, someone like a Simicast might move on. John Matip's a year out from the end of his contract might attract some interest. So I just. I think the changing profile of, of what Jurgen Klopp is asking his players to do in that defence, allied to the fact that the, there's real potential for some departures there, means that you know a defensive signing that that's the reason why that's on the list. But we, you know, there's been a few names thrown out there. The only, the only thing I know at the moment in terms of identity of targets is you know I, I got a bit of a lukewarm response on Jorian Timber. I know he's a name who's been thrown out there a lot, but I don't think it's going to be him this summer. Um, but, you know, there's, there's plenty of other defenders out there and I'm, I'm sure Liverpool will look to get something done in that position if they can. Yeah, absolutely. When you talk about that versatility of, of left-backs, left-sided centre-backs, you know, players who can play in these multiple... It seems to be seems to be all the rage at the moment. It's, you know, it's it, everyone wants the, these defenders. You look at over at Arsenal and, and Kieran Tierney, what, what could happen with his future. He's obviously played centre-back with, uh, with, with Scotland and, and obviously left-back at Arsenal as well. So, um, so yeah, it'll be... It'll be interesting to, to see who does come through the door. Right, we'll wrap it up there. Um, Liverpool fans, let us know what, what you think. Um, who do you want to see signed? Who do you want to see come through the door? And in terms of exits, is, is there anyone that you want to see go? Is there anyone that you that we've mentioned today that you don't want to see go? Um, please let us know in the comments. Make sure to visit Football Insider to find out all the latest news and updates from Liverpool across the Premier League, across Scotland, the Championship, the EFL, and across uh, Europe as well. And make sure, please, to like, subscribe, and share this video if you like the video. Um, David, thank you very much for joining me. We'll be back again soon with another video. Uh, but until then, enjoy uh, you know the, 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 the break and, uh, and all the transfer news that's going to be coming our way.